Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another reading of the presents. We are in the 30s now with Mr. Calvin Coolidge. Mr. Coolidge was born on Independence Day, 1872, at Plymouth Notch, Vermont. He died five days into the new year of 1933 in Northampton, Massachusetts. He was known as Silent Cow. He was a Congregationalist. He attended Amherst, Amherst College in 1895. He was a lawyer, but no military service. His father was John Calvin. Interesting, John Calvin Coolidge, named after one of the reformers, also, also the founder of Calvinist theology. Um, his father was named after him, I believe. And uh, his mother, uh, Calvin Coolidge's mother, was Victoria Josephine Moore Coolidge. Mr. Coolidge, Calvin Coolidge's wife, was Grace Anna Goodhue Coolidge. John, uh, Calvin Coolidge's children, including John Coolidge, who died in 2000, wow, and Calvin, Calvin Coolidge Jr., Born in 1908, but died in 1924. Oh, that's sad. He was young. That was young. Uh, John Coolidge was 94 when he died. 93, 94. That's a long time. Uh, for Calvin, Co President Coolidge, uh, political life, Northampton, Massachusetts City Council, for a, a six months to a year. Northampton City Solicitor for two years, Hampshire County Clerk of Courts in 1903, Massachusetts General Court Member for a year, Northampton Mayor for a year, Massachusetts State Senator for three years, Senate President for a year, Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts for, uh, for two years, Governor of Massachusetts for a year, and then vice president for two years. He was also a one-term president who succeeded after the death of Warren G. Harding. He was a Republican, and but he left office declining of, to run for another term. His vice president was Charles G. Dawson. In the election of in the election of 1924, Mr. Coolidge got 382 electoral votes. Mr. Davis, 136. Mr. Robert M. La Follette, 13. Ugh. 13. That's very low. In the popular vote, Mr. Coolidge got 15,723,789. Mr. Davis got 8,386,242. And La Follette got 4,831,706. Excuse me. Now, the cabinet for Ms. Coolidge is a repeat. Some of these are repeats from Ms. Hart. Secretary of State Charles Evans Hughes. And then Frank B. Kellogg. I had a Dr. Frank L. Kellogg 30 years ago. One of their related. Uh, Secretary of the Treasury, Andrew Mellon. Uh, Secretary of War, again, John W. Weeks, followed by Dwight F. Davis. Attorney General, Harry Dowery, from Mr. Harding's day, time. And then Harlan Fisk Stone, who later became a uh, Justice of the Supreme Court. And then John G. Sargent all as Attorney General. Secretary of the Navy was Edwin Denby from Harding's time, and Mr. Denby was replaced by Mr. Curtis D. Wilbur. Postmaster General Han Henry, uh, excuse me, uh, Postmaster General Harry S. New, and E.W., interesting name, last year. Uh, Secretary of the Interior from Mr. Harding's time was Hubert Work, followed by Roy O. West. 
Secretary of Agriculture was Henry C. Wallace, followed by Howard Gore, followed by William M. Yardine. Yardine, I think it's that's how it's pronounced. J A R D I N. Secretary of Commerce, Herbert Hoover, followed by William Whitting, or Whiting, uh, W H I T I N G. Secretary of Labor, James, Mr. James Davis. Did you know the Coolidge family used sign language to communicate to, to so others would not know what they were saying? Interesting. And Mr. Harlan Fisk Stone was appointed to the Supreme Court in 1925, which means his time as Attorney General was pretty short. State of the Union, uh, population 1923, 105,775,046. National debt in 1929, 16 billion, 931,088, no, I'm sorry, 16 billion, 931,088,484. And still only 48 states in the union. While president, Mr. Coolidge had a pet raccoon named Rebecca, that who which was often found riding around on a president's shoulder. The wo- Roaring Twenties. The 1920s was a time of outrageous fads and fashions, including the flagpole sitting, dance marathons, and ma- mahjong. A game. Some young women became flappers whose behavior defied the conventions of the day. They bobbed the hair, wore bright red lipstick, and painted their knees that showed below their their short skirts, listened to jazz, smoked cigarettes, and drank alcohol. Listening to the radio began growing in popularity. More automobiles than ever before crammed the narrow roadways of of the nation. America was on a move. Mr. Coolidge was the only president to be sworn into office by his father. Interesting. Just to the peace. And not someone from the Supreme Court. That's interesting. As president, Mr. Coolidge refused to use the telephone. Hmm. Coolidge lighted the first national Christmas tree in 1923 on the White House lawn. Ooh, the KKK Ku Klux Klan. For the, her- for, yeah, for the first half of the 1920s, the Ku Klux Klan experienced a burst of popularity throughout the United States. And in 1925, 40,000 marched on Washington, D.C. Following World War I, the Klan emer- enlarged its scope of enemies to include various types of foreigners, especially Jews, Catholics, and anyone considered a communist or socialist. Ooh. Several Klansmen became elected public officials in the South, as well as in Oregon, Maine, and Indiana. With the Great Depression, people's interest waned, and the Klan's membership went from an all-time high of more than 4 million in 1925 to so few that the organization disbanded in 1944, only to, re- to resume during the civil rights movement of the 50s. Huh. The Scopes Monkey Trial, we know about this one. In the summer of 1925, the country's attention focused on the small community of Dayton, Tennessee, Tennessee, not Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Tennessee, where a high school biology teacher, Mr. John Scopes, was on trial for teaching the theory of evolution to his students. Scopes agreed to be prosecuted as a means to promote the trial. He used the hot topic since the excuse me, since the hot topic, and hot is in quotes, hot topic would be certainly bring bring in a, a crowd. And it did. 
William Den Jennings Bryan, we've heard of him, frequent presidential hopeful, volunteered to help prosecute and, and famous defense lawyer Clarence Darrow leaped at the chance to help the ACLU defend Mr. Scopes. People swarmed into Day Dayton for the trial, and some made money selling lemonade and providing entertainment for the crowd. Soon, the proceedings were moved outside to accommodate more than 5,000 people. They watched a war of wits between the two legendary attorneys, especially when Darrow cross-examined Brian and had him, had him admit that the Bible should not be taken literally. Ultimately, Scopes was convicted, but, not, but on appeal, the ruling was overturned. No further action was recommended by the court because nothing is to be gained by prolonging the life of this bizarre case. In quotes. Interesting. Last one for today, Mr. Herbert Hoover, 31st. Born August, oh, I'm sorry, I gotta stop this. Be right back. 